Hi, and welcome to the Becoming Trauma-Informed podcast, where we help you understand how your past painful experiences are affecting your current reality and how you can shift those so you can create your desired future. I'm Dr. Lee, and both myself and our team at the Institute for Trauma and Psychological Safety are excited to support you on your journey. We talk about all the things on this podcast. No topic gets left uncovered. So extending a content warning to you before we get started, if you notice yourself getting activated while listening, invitation to take care of yourself and to pause, skip ahead a bit, or just check out another episode. Let's dive in. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode. I am really excited for the guests that we have today. And I just want to tell a little background story about how we ended up connecting today. And then I'm going to let them introduce themselves because they're going to do it way better than I would. So a lot of y'all know that we've had a lot of growth on TikTok. So I've been hanging out over there a lot more. And there's this been this one human that I have seen come across my feed multiple times. And one of his videos came across immediately. I felt like such this huge realization around how reading for me as a child, as I was going through my own trauma, how it massively impacted me in a positive way. How it was one of the ways that I connected with my parents. It was one of the things that really helped me get through a lot of the hard times that I went through. So I reached out and was like, oh my gosh, this video meant so much. And also, will you please come on the podcast? And I am so excited and delighted that he said, yes. So without further ado, Oliver James, thank you so much for joining us. It's so great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be with you. (laughs) Yeah. So can you tell our listeners a little bit about who you are? What lights you up? Like, what should we know about you? Um, Well, at the current time right now, this is a great time to express who I am because I'm actually in development. Mm -hmm. I'm 35 years old. I just kind of currently learned how to read. I've been teaching myself how to read since about pandemic started and Right now, I'm on this path of discovery of being a father, just now stepping into my like adulthood. You know, the world's changing underneath my feet, and I don't even know uh, where to start, where to begin, where to end. I guess we'll go deep into that with the conversation, but it's really hard to express who I am today because of me learning how to read. Uh, I'm in a development process. I, I'm, I'm learning all about the new things that the world has to offer me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's yeah. such a beautiful reflection. You know, so your videos on TikTok are about you learning to read and the journey and the process. And you've been really vulnerable there about the highs and the lows of that process. And the video that actually I resonated with, I noticed you, were you reading The Body Keeps the Score? I think so. I don't think I read the book, but I think I was reading some of it like I was reading because mm-hmm. I go through some books and just scheme through it to see what yeah. what I would like because I don't even know what I'm reading but I think yeah. I did go through it yeah yeah and that book is a really foundational book in the trauma world mm-hmm. and also that book I when people are like oh I'm starting my trauma journey and I'm reading the be the body keeps the score I'm like stop <laughs> do not pass, do not pass go do not collect two hundred dollars like that book is that's a that's a a heavy book and so I remember seeing yeah. that and going like wow And I was just really admiring the fact that that was something that on your journey, you were, you were tackling. Yeah. You know, I don't know other people's journey with reading, but mental health, life, you know, everything ties into reading. And Mm -hmm. when I didn't know how to read, I missed elements of life. I missed different factors of life, different like visualization of life. Like there's so much. and diving into this now it's really hard for me to even express i express it as much as i can but i'm in a really unknown territory now i think with this <laughs> yeah i think there's probably parallels between the reading journey and the trauma journey because yeah you know when i learned about trauma at first there was this whole like it like cracked everything open and all of a sudden I'm Mm. looking at the world through an entirely different lens and and I hear people say that a lot of I started questioning everything Mm. I knew and going wait a second is this true do I believe this so did you have some of those similar thoughts or, or feelings yeah I'm currently in that moment now you know, the, the world doesn't make as much sense as it used to make. Mm. Uh, 
Yeah, and, that, and it's really scary. So when you think about the things that you're saying about these books, I'm like, do I keep reading or do I stop? But you can't, you can't stop. You can't right. stop in between. You, you you can get lost if you stop. You got to keep going. And it's it's really scary because that's, you would have to understand reading to understand that. Like if you mm-hmm. expressed that to me before, I'd have been like, what are you talking about? You sound like a, like you're speaking in tongue or something. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm expressing that once you take on a reading journey, if you've already done it, then you understand this. If you, if you really got into it, you, you would not be a destructive person to anything in the world. If you really got reading, like if you really got it, you know, you would understand that there's a chaotic dance within life. When you, when you start learning how to read, that's what I got from it. I'm like, everything was one way. When I started learning how to read, it was just a way I lived amongst all different ways you could have been living. (laughs) Like that's, that's a very shocking development to the brain. You know, that's like developing Santa Claus isn't real at 35, (laughs) you know, like, it's like, what are you kidding me? Like, but times a million, you're like, hold on. Life isn't life. You're like, huh? You want to just explode. You don't know what to do. And I'm in that space right now. It's just like, you understand that you can either go over the board and just Mm -hmm. completely lose yourself. Or you can realize that this is the world you've been living in all along and just dance in it. Have a good time. Oof. Like that's what, that's what's reading got me to. Cause I really, I'm like, for the discoveries that come into my brain, it, I'm 35. I'm not like 10 or like, like yeah. it's like life just went from zero to a hundred overnight. <laughs> yeah. I'm curious, you're modeling something for people. Well, you're modeling a few things for people. You're modeling that, you know, things that quote unquote, we were supposed to learn when we're younger how hard that can be to learn them when we're older and also how important and still valuable that journey is. You know, you're, you're modeling being really vulnerable. This is something that everyone assumes that adults can do. And, and mm-hmm. there's, and, and I, I appreciate this because as a, as a educator and as a former, you know, professor, there's so much assumption that everyone in America knows how to read mm. and that everyone in America ha- if I put information in front of somebody, they're going to understand it. If I put it in front of them in written form. And that is, it's a huge, I guess the word I want to use here is like privilege of, if I can just make the assumption that, yeah, I can write something and hand it to somebody and they're going to get it. There are a lot of people in our country that, you know, in our world that that's not the case. Yeah. And if they do, they get it the way they want to get it, which could even be worse. Mm. So you know people don't get that part you're like you you they're just getting messages the way they want to take them and you're like yep like not even the real messages they're getting from it so there's a there's a really uh like just I don't know how to explain a lot of this so I try to explain it to you as much as I can but there's a really weird space in between when you don't know something and you do know something there's just this weird and then when you find out something and there's a really weird space in between when this could happen, what times, like what's happening to me is very unique. It's very, in my mind, I look at it now, it's different. It's very, it's good. It's good. You know, people can get information that they can't get from a kid. You know, the emotional and verbal response that a kid yeah. can't give you. Yeah. I'm having that same thing, yeah. but I can give you it and be like, hold on. So this is a child. I'm like, I can tell you what's happening now. Children are emotionally being attacked when you do these things. Like you don't, as an adult, what if I came to you? I'm a physical fitness like trainer and a physical fitness person. I do it for, for, for sport, for fun. I do it just for fun. I hurt my back today and I'm like, man, I can't wait to go hurt it again. Like, it's like, <laughs> this is great. Like, but I enjoy it. It's whatever. But I understand if I was to have trained anybody like how I train myself, it would be torture. It would be abuse. It would be mm-hmm. all types of like, especially if I was like, you have to do it this way or else yeah. you'll never be smart. You'll never be fit. You'll never be healthy. You yeah. need to do it this way. And I start to think of that and I'm like, education doesn't have many ra- ra- avenues. It's like, as a fitness trainer, I have to adapt to every single client for their specific needs. Even if they, they're ruining their lives, they drank last night, they did this every day. And I still be like, okay, yeah. 
you yeah. know what? That was great. You did, and you still, you still do everything you can to meet their needs. And these are grown men, grown women. They're pampered with all types of stuff, and they still couldn't even handle me saying, "Hey, too many drinks, too many right. drinks." Oh my gosh, too many. You see that vulnerability come out, yeah. and you're like, "I just said too many drinks." Imagine what you just did to an eight-year-old when you told them to sit still, watch this, dude. I'm like, you are abusing them. They have no control to tell you stop, stop yeah. abusing me. But if I told a, a, an adult, just hey, don't drink on Fridays anymore with your husband and wives, and do, they would be yeah. like, I'm firing him. I'm not training with that guy no more. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's abusing right. me. He thinks he's trying to take my rights away. He's trying to take me away. I'm like, then I think about that. I'm like, for me now learning as an adult, there's an emotional connection to this. I want to learn the way I want to. When people right. come to me and try to give me all these different ways, I like it. But after about two, three days and then in my, my life, I'm like, ah, I don't want you in my life no more. I don't want you. Like, I'm learning like you. You're, you're being this. You're being you. And you're bringing you around me. And then I start to see that. That's when I start to realize, I'm like, when I'm reading on my own, doing my thing, however I want, doing pull-ups and running around, I'm learning. I'm learning how to read. I'm no, no, And I'm doing it with ease, no stress at all. Mm. I sit here and I could drink a, a, a soda. Or I don't drink soda, but I drink a club soda, watch YouTube and read a book at the same time, do this. Do, and actually, no, I'm like, is this wrong? You're like, it's wrong considered to people who would, tell you it's it, you know should be a certain way but you're learning my friend you're reading right. and you're enjoying it you're having a great time doing this I'm like how about that I'm like now once you get around these people who want you to learn this way look at this stress and anxiety and overload and this and you're like you you hate life and you don't want to be around that I'm like this is abuse you're being forced you're being tortured and they don't even know it yeah. at all you know you have kids I have kids there's two words that popped in my head as you were talking. The, the first word is liminality, which which we actually have a podcast episode way back, like, I don't know, 80 episodes ago on this. Mm -hmm. And it's that in-between space, right? Of the, I started this journey and there's a part of me that's like, oh, this is really hard. And I don't know if I want to do this. And also like, I can't go back. Like I have to keep moving because I guess a good metaphor would be, you know, I'm a caterpillar. I went in that cocoon. I turned into goo. I'm not the butterfly yet. I can't go back to being the caterpillar, but I'm not the butterfly yet. And this is yeah. like, this kind of sucks, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I like that popped in my head while you were talking. And then the other thing, this, this, the second half, I'm so grateful you're talking about this because I have two kids who have autism. I've been diagnosed as autistic and ADHD. And we talk a lot about accommodations at our Institute. And people think about accommodations as this, like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to spoil or like give extra to someone in order for them to be able to do what everyone else can. Something we talk about is what if instead of looking at it as we're going to have this uniform approach and then other, like certain people are going to need extra help. What if we individually ask every person, what do you need? What if yeah. we individually go to every person and say, okay, how do you learn best? And then how can yeah. we as an organization support you through that? And yeah. a lot of people think that that takes extra effort. It takes extra effort in the front. Mm -hmm. It is so much easier after you set it up because everyone yeah. thrives after yeah. that. And, and yeah. you know, we're lucky that we're in a school system where the school system really approaches our kids that way of what does each kid need in order to thrive? And then mm -hmm. let's implement that at the beginning of the school year. And then we'll evaluate as we go on. And I know that 99.9% .9 of kids don't get that, you know, yourself yeah. included, obviously. Yeah. I mean, I'm making an assumption. And if you had gotten that, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. Yeah, this is all true. I mean, it is. It's 100% the truth. Can I ask... And I'm not sure if you've shared this because if you have, I haven't seen it, but like from a childhood perspective, was there just an assumption made? What did that school experience look like? You know, it, it, it's hard to explain now with the mind that I have, but I can see it was a bunch of people trying to figure out what to do with someone like me, mm. you know, it, and I can just literally just sit here and see it. I'm like, this was just like bad parenting. It was just, that's, you know, that I got a bad case of bad parenting when it came to school. And, you know, I was in a time zone where they were running special ed classes, trying to figure out what to do with us. And 
they weren't seeing kids as humans at that time. You know, we're just yeah. now starting to realize because we're the kids who grew up, we're just now realizing, hey, we're the only ones who realize like that sucked. And we're yeah. like, we're we're not going to just make it suck again for the kids again. And we're like, why all the other parents didn't see how much it sucked? And they're like, right. they did. They just didn't change much. They didn't want to yeah. try to, they didn't understand, I think, in a lot of times in the past, change was capable as in any time in your life. Yeah. So I think I got that same inheritance. I inherited that you got older, now live and die. You know, mm-hmm. and I was like, no, what happened was I got older and I was still me. You know, I was still like walking through the parks and I'm like, I used to swing here. I used to hang out here, I used to play tag here. I'm like, what what happened? Where everybody at? Why everybody looking at my friends? I'm like, he's on drugs, he's dying. Mm. I'm like, dang, we used to do fun. And then I started to think, I'm like, well, when we was on the swings, started to see kids on the swings. I'm like, there were people walking around like me, looking mm. older, lost a little bit. They were, you know, maybe looked halfish like a drug addict, maybe not a drug addict, like old, but not old. Yeah, I'm like, but then I was the kid on the swing looking at them saying, man, when I get older, I ain't going to be like them dudes. I'm going to figure out how to get out of here. But then I'm the dude now Mm. saying it. So I'm like, that's when I started to realize I was like, I don't think my friends can see that. I like remembered saying to myself, I'm not going to be this dude. Like, I remember these dudes when we were young, these, these older people. Yeah. And I remember what they were doing. I just didn't understand why they did it. Now I'm older and I'm doing it. And I understand why I'm doing it now. The problem is, how do I stop? How do I become something different? How do I change what, I, what I've always knew? Like, you know, the only thing my image has been shown to me, like in my, in my movie, I've shown in my head. You know what I mean? How do mm-hmm. I make a new movie? How do I change this <sighs> movie now? So I was like, this was, it was really hard for me because I'm like, I'm not a tree. You know, I'm not a cow. I'm not a car they gotta be that i'm human i'm like i could be i could be anything i'm like it was weird in my head and i'm like but how do you be anything when you only been something for so long like that's where i'm at now but it's been so perplexed in my mind that i'm like this is programming i'm like you gotta yes someone's programmed me to be this way and i'm like literally walking next to someone else who has a totally different world and we're on the same earth and I'm like, how is that possible? And it was like, because of who, your life, your, your programming, everything you watched, everything you did. And I'm like, that was all just, that my whole life was just a, a movie I have, I've created in my mind. You're like, yeah. So I could be your movie. If I, if I start learning that, you'd be like, yes, you could be my movie, the movie I've been living. And that, that, it just blows my mind. And I'm like, how is that possible? And, and no one in my world attempted it. You know what I mean? Like, and yeah. went after it. Oh, you said so many things. I'm like, that's a quote. That's a quote. (laughs) Before we started recording, talking about your on this journey of, I'm like, I would say becoming a motivational speaker. I'm like, you're already motivating me right now. So I think you, you already are a really great motivational speaker. And in the trauma world, we talk about adverse childhood experiences. Have you ever heard of these? No. Okay. So they're called ACEs or adverse childhood experiences. And adverse childhood experiences are things that I went through as a kid that we know from research, the more of these things I experience, the more likely I've had trauma and the more likely I'm going to have negative outcomes due to these things. So the more likely I'm going to have substance use or addiction, the more likely I'm going to end up in the prison system, the more likely I'm going to have medical issues like heart disease, all these things. And what you just described there of playing as a kid and looking out and seeing what I'm hearing is not seeing opportunity, Mm -hmm. right? Like, okay, this is what getting old looks like in my community. Mm -hmm. This is what being an adult looks like in my community and that programming that like seeing that every day, Mm -hmm. that is a huge negative impact on how we grow up as kids versus somebody growing up in a neighborhood where you see possibility yeah. Every day. Yeah. And this is something I try to explain to people because people are like, well, you know, everybody has the same opportunities. And I'm like, yes, every human has opportunity. Every human has possibility. And if I'm consistently shown possibilities versus I'm consistently not shown possibilities, that affects how 
much I think I have possibility. Yeah, I mean, people people don't seem to understand this. You know, it'd be much easier to name yourself if you weren't already named. Mm, mm -hmm. So, you know, that's what people don't understand. Like, if you don't believe me, try to name yourself. Try to change your name right now and live by that. And then yeah. if anyone calls you that, says, hey, Oliver, or whatever, don't even answer. But it doesn't even exist. Yeah. And whatever name you made up, that's the new name you go by. You won't even remember that name by tomorrow. But if you went to a person who's never been named and told them to name their self, they'll remember yeah. their name tomorrow. It's their only name. Oliver, it's, uh, this is so interesting you're bringing this up because I actually changed my name when I was 18, 17. Huh. And that process was one of the hardest processes I've ever gone through because yeah. it it was a I never felt like this name fit and so I'm choosing a different name and the shift that that caused other people to have to make that was incredibly difficult for some people there are some people in my life now you know that was 20 years ago there are people that are still have a hard time letting go of that identity and actually our oldest changed their name when they were 12 and I remember having a hard time with it. And then I was like, wait, how am I having a hard time with this? Like I literally did this and it is, you're right. It is so hard to change how you are showing up. And the, like you said, to, to shift the movie, to, to decide to be an actor in a different movie when everyone's like, but wait, no, you were in that movie. Yeah. And like, I, I, I get you're like trying to rebrand yourself, but like, I know you from over here. Yeah. And so I'm going to keep taking you back to that old movie, yeah. even though you don't want to go there. Yeah. You have no idea that it's just like your name. People will keep calling you it, even though you've changed your name. You, they won't, you know, no matter what, like, it's the same yeah. thing. Like people won't respect your decision. You have to make it, you have to believe it. So yeah. once you start to sit there and say, no, would you call me now when they call you and you don't, you don't answer you psychologically now playing with your mind. Now you're yeah. starting to see like, what is all this chaos in my head? I'm like, that's life. That's life. You'd be like ignoring them, knowing that they're calling me, knowing that used to be my name, knowing that my name changed, knowing that I don't, I'm, I'm standing my ground to not answer them. No, I'm like, you're programming a new name. Yeah. In 20 years, they're going to call you the new name. Yeah. You, you're gonna, whatever name you said it was, they'll call you it. But that you have to literally shift the whole world. I start to see that I'm like, you have to change the entire world. The, you got to do it. And that emotional change, that emotional journey that you've expressed is the same one I'm going through with reading. I'm yeah. changing the whole world's view. But in that change, there's, there's people, there's things that come. That's like the naysayers, the this, the, 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 like, and my head will go in. Cause I'm like, what am I on? What journey am I doing? What is this? And you start to see just like a person who might've changed their name. You're like, you're yeah. in a journey to, to show people my name is this, not the name you've been calling yeah. me. And eventually one day, one day, everyone's going to see it that way. I'm going to see it that way. I won't even remember the whole name. Right. Like, and it happens. But that's the right. same thing we're reading. It's like one day that's going to be just like that. <laughs> just like that. So this takes me to a question I really wanted to ask you because I have not experienced this to the level you have. And even at the level I've experienced it, 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 it's been a lot. You have a lot of people following you. You're sharing a lot of really vulnerable stuff. How has that been of, you know, you know, starting with zero followers and then all of a sudden you're on talk shows and, and podcasts and people are, you know, waking up at 6 a.m. to read with you. And like, how is, <laughs> what's that been like? It, it's, it's unreal. You know, you start to see what it's like to be someone you said you would be mm. you know you start to see how people who are are who they are you know you're like how is that person so that person yeah. and it's like because that person decided to live as that person so so much that that other people wanted to be that person you know when my mind when I started to look at reading when you see me when you hear me when you're around me you know you could obviously see there's not many people to get around me because this is this is powerful they'd be able to steal too much of this energy from me i can't just let them around me it just, it'll be real hard yeah and the reason why i'm saying that is because all that makes a big 
like ball of energy that allows you to fight off the outside world. Mm -hmm. Like just sitting there knowing everything that's happening that could happen, you know, everything. And then just sitting there saying like, I got this. Like if, 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 if everything goes wrong and, and, and the internet does what it, that you're like, I still, I still got this. You're like, what? Like if everything goes sideways and doesn't matter, or if everything goes great and it's like, I, I'm always going to get this. I'm all right. And staying in that space mentally yeah. is how I, I, when everything happens, I'm like, if there's a million followers, I'm like, man, if the count got canceled today with a million followers, I got this. And you're like, oh. why do you keep saying that in your mind? I'm like, because if you don't practice that, you won't have it. <laughs> right. You will not have it. You, and that's what I do every day. Every day I sit, I'm like, you know what? I'm just a guy getting up reading. I got this. I got this reading thing. I'm like, but what if, what if this happened? I'm like, I got this. I'm good. Right. It's, it's always going to be good because my main goal is to just learn how to read. So if I become poor in the gutters, I'm going to be reading with a book like, man, how did you end up here? I'm like, I got this. <laughs> I'm reading. I'm like, how? I'm like, I'm trusting that because I'll be 100% honest with you. When you trust that, everything goes sideways pretty much 99% of your life. Yeah. But that 1% shows you you're on the right track. Mm -hmm. sounds crazy as hell like I'm just no, being honest it, do it doesn't <laughs> I'm I am resonating so hard with this I'm like yes because one of the questions I get a lot is you'll say things and people will get like really upset or you'll or you'll say something and people get really excited and like how do you handle that and I'm like you know what I I gotta do my own regulation like I I gotta be regulated inside so that it's not about what's happening outside yeah because there's so much that mm. is outside of my control externally. The only thing I really have control over is my internal. And my internal is like you said, I, we say this all the time. I'm like, look, if this bad thing happens, is it going to kill me? If the answer is no, cool. I'll figure it out. Yeah. And if it does kill me, well, I don't need to figure it out. So either way, I'm good. And that, like, I know that kind of sounds a little morbid, but that's really where I've had to go of wow. it, if I focus on how everyone else is interpreting my journey, yeah. then I'm not focusing on my journey. Ooh, wow. You just, you know what? I always say I have a gift for this. And when it hits me, it, it, I got to let it out. Mm -hmm. And where I'm at right now is what I'm feeling. And I'm always on this. This is how I live my life. You know, it's hard. You know, what you're doing right now, girl, you know, I can't, I would never know your, your life. But I know you're in it. You know, you're like, I'm in it. I'm, I'm doing this thing. You know, I, and I got ways how I want to do it. I, I know people want me to do it this way. Like, you know, it just happens. Whatever it is, some good, some bad. Some, you know, am I going to be viral? Am I going to make this podcasting? Like whatever your thoughts are, they are, you know, I don't know, mm -hmm. but these are mine. Like, would this happen? Would this happen? Would this? And there's so much, I'm not even going to lie to you. Like where I got to in a space where I was like, how do I control all the things? And I'm like, I started to focus on the fears and I'm like, one of my biggest fears was flying. And I was like, man, I'm, this is hard to think of. Like who can save me from these fears? I'm like, I don't know. How y'all all on the plane? And, and I know you're scared. I'm like, what's going on? Like all this type of stuff, you know? And I'm like, okay, this is part of like how social media is. Cause I want to travel, you know, I want to go to other countries and podcast there and meet other people. I, I'm thinking my head's going, but then I'm like, I got this weird fear of flying. And I'm like, is it never going to go away? And I'm like, I don't think so. I think this is a part of how life is. And I start mm -hmm. to think about that. And I'm like, okay, so this is a really big fear. So I'm like, those little fears, they add, they feel just like this one. I'm like, why yeah. do those little ones feel just like this flying fear? So I started to feel, I'm like, okay, so what I need to do is I need to start thinking big in my fears. No one's taught you how to fear the right way, you know? And I'm like, this is Ooh. a weird thing. And you're no, like, what um... you know, and I'm like, literally thinking that I'm like, Oh my God. I'm like that. What I just hit you with. I'm like, that's, something I keep now and like even myself I'm like I don't, if people can get what I'm saying to you I'm like I'm gonna tell you what I have to do so I have a, a million followers and I can deal with the problems yeah I have to sit on a plane right because I have these fears and I don't think people would tell you these type of fears 
I have to sit on a plane when I'm traveling to a place to maybe go do a motivational speaking gig. I have a son. I suffer from severe uh, OCD, ADHD from the traumas I was yeah. dealt with. You know, the, so I suffer from it. Many people do. So I'm thinking and I'm like, all these stuff will tear me down. And I've come to this conclusion while I'm on the plane now. And I've made this conclusion in my head and this image from all the things that I would say in my mind when I was flying, why I was so scared. Yeah, I've decided to meet that person in hell. Like it's weird to say, but I was like, and I'm yeah. decided to have the conversation, not directly, but meaning I've decided to meet that person in a in a space where I'm in a dark space. And 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 now let's stand toe to toe and let's talk. We're in a dark space because I'm in air with you and I'm petrified, you know, of life right now. But I decided to say, the worst thing that can happen, Oliver, is this plane goes down. You know yeah. that, right? You can make up all the things you want to do, but that's the worst thing that can happen. I'm like, yes, all right. I'm like, okay. Now you got all the chaos in your mind, all right? You're not thinking about nothing that's fearing you. The social media people are nothing. I'm like, no, now you're flying thinking about that, right? I'm like, yeah. And I started to think about that. I was like, so what would you think everybody else, since you're conscious enough to at least think of that, what would everybody else probably do if the plane started going down? I was like, man, I'll be honest. It would probably look like a very magical, sadistical, like, transforming screaming way of people yeah. going chaotic like people yeah. would lose their their train of thought they probably would start just they probably won't be human no more they probably yeah. just go crazy and i was like so you've discovered something you understand now that life will bring you that Oof. will bring you that moment yeah how are you going to approach that when it comes to you that's when i start to think about it in my head i was like all right so if the plane's going down and everybody's screaming right now I'm going to sit here. I'm going to feel the scream in me and I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to watch everybody. I'm like, why? Because now I understand none of this really matters. I'm like, because this is going to happen regardless. I'm going to end one day. Yeah. And I'm like, so I can't fear the end. I got to start meeting those end moments with a solution. Like, okay, if you go, if we going down, then I'm going down with, 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 with a smile on my face. I'm going right. to go down chaotically like this. <laughs> like, why? Because... <laughs> I understand that there's no difference. I could be yeah. screaming chaotic with them and lose my, my life. Or I can understand that it's coming and I can live life, even if it's mm -hmm. coming. So yeah. even if I'm going down with the plane, I'm going down like what? I don't get it. I get it. This was going to happen. Like yeah. you are, you's are reacting to something that was going to happen. Right. I see it in my family members. I see it like, you know, we lose a grandma. There's nothing wrong with it. And I, I'm, I'm like, mom, I've been thinking about grandma every day since I was a kid. Like I wake up and I'm like, she's over there alone sometimes. And she did, and I'm like, I don't know what to do. It's just how life is. But I'm like, y'all knew she was sick. Y'all knew she was this. And I'm like, why are you screaming and crying? And in my mind, I'm like, this is a bad programming. Mm -hmm. Like you knew this, you knew something's missing in our lives that you're screaming. You're not screaming because she's dead. You're screaming because you never got to actually meet her. Mm. You never, I, cause I know I never, I don't know. Yeah. You. Yeah. And that, and I see it now. That's when I'm realizing. I'm like, that's when I realize you have to know you. If that plane's going down, Oliver, who are you? Cause not many people won't know who they are. They'll just start screaming in chaos, start right. fighting their arms and stuff and chewing. They'll just go crazy. They won't know them. But if you know you, you can see that you're like, this is bigger than me. Like this yeah. is huge. And that was how I started to approach fear like approach that because this is one of the huge and this is one thing i've never expressed to people but that's how now i get to handle a damn comment right i'm like now i'm realizing i'm like oh a comment I'm like, <laughs> and i just went through i just went through time and space on so trying to figure out like how to deal with a plane crash and now i'm gonna make mens with it i'm gonna actually yeah. be okay with it if it goes yeah. down i'm like cool i was meant to float down and die like how do you do that i'm like you sit there and cry that's what i did and i cried with the image I thought about it because I'm like, this is a possibility in every aspect of every fear, right, Oliver. So now you have to understand if someone comes and puts a gun to your head, gosh, you're like, what are you going to do? I'm like, you have to understand that in your mind before they get there. Yeah. Start start learning that now. So because it's coming, not that, but something's coming. A car accident, something's coming. coming. Like, right. Oh something's coming. You're like, and that's what everybody's running from. But mm -hmm. if you start exercising like, yeah, it's coming. <laughs> All right. When it comes, I'll be ready. Like, you'd be like, so when it does actually come, you will be ready. You'd be like, yeah. oh my gosh, I'm really ready to this, to die. You'd be like, I've been exercising death. You've been exercising death. 
exercising it. We have to exercise death. You got to exercise, yeah. you know, and I don't, this is weird to explain, but no, this I, is what I, this is what I do. And, and cause I, I feared it and, and people know this anxiety, you go in medicine, you go, and I'm like, right. this is coming. What do you mean? No, this is coming. I don't know what they blocking in your mind, but that's coming. The image of whatever you thought is coming one day. You have to now, at least myself, sit back and start to understand that every one of those fears need to be, they need to be addressed and they need right. to be cared and loved because if one of them is going to be it. <laughs> that's it. And when it comes, you love it. When it comes, you'd be like, oh, this is how you were coming. Yeah. It sounds chaotic, but I'm literally putting myself in that world because if I don't, I can, I can lose myself. I yes. have to understand that I'm like, when it comes, I got to be like, oh, I'm crazy. Right. Hell. Like happily crazy. Like, what do you mean? I'm up. Cause this is more real than filing taxes. I'm gonna, yeah. cause y'all will lose your life over filing taxes. I'd rather lose my life over the real life. Cause I'm waiting for that. I'm like, that's what I'm like. I'm like, okay, cool. It is not pre- preaching. It's not churchy. It's real. It's so yeah. we're floating in freaking space. Like you need to know it's real. Practice the real things that are coming because that's what we're fearing. You know what I mean? Like that's what I, I'm myself is feeling that every day. Mm. I don't think you know this about me. I am a nurse practitioner and I used to work in critical care, ICUs, bone marrow transplant. Like the mortality rate of the people I took care of was around 70%. Wow. So seven out of every 10 people I took care of died within three to six months of me taking care of them. Most of the time, I would say about 50% didn't leave the hospital. And you're putting words to something that I've never personally articulated because I had a huge fear of death growing up. You know, my mom was a child hospice social worker. So she worked with a lot of kids who were dying. I remember being nine years old and going, oh my gosh, I'm going to die. And it's going to be awful. Like these kids, these poor kids, what happens if I get sick like that? A lot of fear around death growing up. And so I think looking back, I went into nursing and I went into critical care because I felt like I had some control, some power over death. I was like, you know what? I can be afraid of this thing or I can get to know this thing. Mm. I don't think I realized that's what I was doing. (laughs) And, you know, I have sat and held the hands of people who have died with nobody surrounding them, right? Like Christmas Eve, I've sat and I've been in the most horrific ends and the most peaceful, like loving, caring, surrounded by family ends. And what you're speaking to is you're looking something in the face that most humans aren't willing to look at, even though it is a hundred percent certainty that we're all going to have to face it. And you're going, okay, what do I have control over? And what don't I have control over? Because A lot of people don't know this. A fear of flying is a fear of being out of control. Mm -hmm. I don't have control over the plane. Yep. And somebody else is taking me somewhere. And I, there's no way for me to decide how that goes. Yep. Once I'm on that plane. And so for most humans, like when you think about that and the, the connection with death, (laughs) Yes, I'm choosing to stay alive. And also I have no idea where I'm going to end up or like what that end's going to look like. So I want to, whenever that moment comes around, be able to, like you said, sit there with a smile on my face and be like, you know what? I showed up the way I wanted to show up. I did what I thought was best and I got to know myself and I got to act as the human that I wanted to be. There is a sense of groundedness, like Mm -hmm. resolve in that of, Mm -hmm. yeah, you're right. If I'm approaching life like that and somebody makes a comment, okay, you know, (laughs) I can look like, I can look at that comment and go, is this somebody I would have on my wise counsel? Is this somebody that if I had a boardroom of people that I would want to advise me on how I'm going to live my life, that I would sit them at the table. If not say what you say, I don't care. Right. If yeah. so, okay, let me like, let me think about that. Let me reflect on the fact that you just said something to me and maybe I'm not showing up the way I want to show up. Mm-hmm. Either way, I'm not going to freak out about it. Like you said, I'm not going to freak out about it because I now know who I am and who I want to be. So I can use that information someone's just given me and like, look at it and go, is this something I want to incorporate or not? Yes. Mm-hmm. And that's, ah, oh, that's, mm. That seems so simple. 
to people, but people, <laughs> people are not. not, they're, they're not technically. It's like when you hear a person goes, I got OCD. That's why I have to do that. And I'm like, do you ever really have OCD? Like, do you know what real OCD is? And I'm like, can I put it, can I give you a little taste of it? You would never be the same. Your whole life would just end right now. You probably yeah. want to kill yourself. Like, and a lot of people don't get it. They're like, what? Like your OCD that you just mentioned, that's, that's how you live life. And that's what a lot of people, don't, I'm like, you live life like that, knowing what, what things are, but not technically exercising them yourself, not technically living in it, not actually in the field of these, these, these issues that the world has to offer, but you're, you are it, you are all the issues and you don't, and many people are that you're like, you're every yeah. part of the issue and you don't even know it. Like yeah. that is to me, that's so wild because every single human in this world is a part of the issues that are going on in this world. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, we all think we're not part of those issues. Like right. we're not. You can't escape it. Like you can't escape anything that you're trying to escape. And the reason why I'm saying this, I think mostly important is because of purpose. Mm hmm people are out here trying to figure out purpose. That's the same thing I'm trying to do with this reading yeah. thing. You know, yeah. it's like a, it's like purpose. It's like something is smallly, like edging me on to a purpose. And the world is not designed for my purpose or your purpose. Mm -mm. You have, you have to create it. You literally, I don't think people would understand what it like. I, I'm going to tell you, there's no person in my life, you know, there's my, my lady, she's the closest thing to it, but she has her own life. So she's not going to get it the way I do. And I'm not going to get it the way she does. Who understands like your purpose completely because yeah. you barely understand it. Right. But, but what, yeah, you barely do. But when you start exercising your purpose, when I mean, you just, it, I'm going to be honest, I've done some really distasteful stuff, mm -hmm. but I was exercising my purpose. That's exactly what it looked like. And I'm like, this is what a lot of people suffer from right here. Exercising their purpose and their purpose backfiring on them and them thinking that it was a curse. You know, they went into oh. it. They didn't. It, yeah, they, they, don't, they don't have no idea. And I'm like, hold on, you you cheated on your, your you know, your person and you you, you stole money and you, you went to prison and you, you did drugs. And you, I'm like, oh, you was on your purpose. Right. How you feel about that? You'd be like, what? How you feel today? You'd be like, I just want to stop doing that. I'm like, oh, good. Shake your hand. Great. Yo, I'm happy you did all that. That was a great ride. You'd be like, what? I hurt so many people. Right. I did. I'm like, yeah, you did. But now I'm about to show you something even more amazing. Everything you just, you just did, you can now go and not even fix it. You can change and recreate and reconstruct it to the way you like your relationship with your ex, your relationship with your kids. And your, your mind can't seem to understand how that can be. It can't, it, it just cannot understand it. But any person in this place, any person in a place of like, what, what? Like, and they're going like, I just wanna go forward, edge forward because you're in your purpose. You'd be like everything. And I'm learning that because I'm it too. Yeah. I, it's so hard for me to even express and understand this because I'm part of it. But I'm trying to give people this because I'm starting to believe it. I'm actually really start at that place where I'm like, no, this is trigger warning to you, but I have kids and I had to sit back and realize I'm like, I may lose my kids before my kids lose me. Mm. I think every parent has to do that. And I was just like, this thing is a suffering journey in life. And yeah. I'm like, if we do not get a hold of this and start understanding, I'm like, you will, I thought it was going to be okay. And then I became a father. And you're like, why is it back again? Why yeah. am I suffering again? Why am I? I'm like, because the suffering is inside of you. You don't, you never going to, you, your kid's going to get old. You're going to get old too. And you're going to be like, then they didn't die. And you, I'm like, and now what you suffering from now? You'd be like, oh man, I'm old. Now I'm suffering because I'm old. And I'm, and I'm like, you never stopped suffering, man. Like never. And this is people. This is the world. This is what's happening to all of us. Like I realized this myself. I had kids and I'm like, oh my gosh, when my kids die, what if this? Now my life suffering sucks, right. sucks, sucks, sucks. And I'm like, how can I can't sit here and say if my kid die, my kid dies. It yeah. was so great to meet my kid at three, four years old. Why can't I do that? Right. But that's suffering. Cause you know, you're like, what if that happens? You're going to purposely torture yourself. I'm like, yeah, probably get drunk, probably hurt myself, probably do this, probably want to crash my car. Probably I'm like, why? 
I'm like, because I lost my kid. I can think of that before I lose my kid. You can tell a person, what happened if you kid died? Don't say that. You oh, right. don't, don't think, don't, think about I'm these like, things. Because I'm like, we got to say it. But what if that happens? Who are you if it happens? Who right? are you? We're married. We are a married couple. If this kid happened, what happens to us? Did right. you think about that? I don't want to think about that. I'm like, then this marriage may not be a good marriage because there's things in life you can't. That means if you're avoiding this, you're avoiding everything, all right. types of serious, scary things. I know this from myself. And I'm realizing that because I'm like, this is sad because this is torture. Torture. This is torture. It's torture. If you do not approach it, if you sit there and just allow that to be that way, you have people like parents who would literally be overprotective. They do, they, and then they ruin the, it's, you get what I mean? Like a cycle. They ruin the Absolutely. relationship. You're using the word suffering. And, and this is something that I've, I've lost a lot of people on. There's actually one of our, one of our more controversial TikToks. I, I asked, I said, this has been the most helpful question for me. And it's also one of the most, the meanest questions I ever ask myself or my clients or anyone. And I save it for very, very specific times, but it's, are you done suffering yet? Mm-hmm. And for me, what I've realized is I'm going to go through pain. Things are like unimaginable things are going to happen. I've already been through unimaginable things. I've been through things that <laughs> do I, do I wish that they hadn't happened? No, but would I want to go through them again? Definitely not. No. And <laughs> there is a difference between pain and suffering because suffering is the meaning I'm getting out of this is not beneficial. The meaning I'm getting out of this does not serve me. It yeah. keeps me stuck. It keeps me from living that purpose versus, you know, I got, I got a book for you and I'm not sure if you've read it, but Victor Frankel, man search for meaning. So Victor Frankel, he was in the psychotherapy field and he was in the Holocaust and was put into a concentration camp and survived. And he wrote a book after that about how he made meaning out of that experience. And I'm like, and, and so many people are like, how could you go through this horrific experience and find positive meaning out of that? And, and for me, and this is, this is really part of my purpose and, and the work I do is like, how can I not, you know, I, the, the other choice is for me to decide that this horrible thing that happened had no meaning, no purpose, or that it was supposed to take me away from my purpose. And like, I just can't live that. Mm. I, I can't, I can't stay in that space. So like, sometimes I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes I'm not done suffering and I I need to like wallow in it for a minute and I need to feel bad for myself. And I need to talk about how awful this is. And by doing that, by actually going, this would be horrific. This would be awful. Like, I don't, I don't even know what I would do, but I'm going to think about it and I'm going to figure out what meaning I'm going to get from it by actually letting yourself do that. Like you're talking about, that is how you find the meaning that is how you stop suffering. That is how you go. Mm-hmm. Okay. That was painful as hell. And <laughs> what's next? Yeah. And you start to realize life, you realize you, you overcome life sufferings. You're like, you're realizing you're like, Oh my gosh, I'm literally in a, a whirlpool of life suffering, like just suffering life. Yeah. And you're like, and there's no, nothing happening. And like there's things happening. The yeah. physical things aren't things that are suffering. The things that are making you suffer are your thoughts. They're in your right. mind. Yes. That's what you're suffering from. You caught a flat tire. You got to pay your bills. You can't do this. Your husband left you. You know, that, that's not suffering. That's, that's, that's fun. It's pain. You, once you start right. to realize, you, it's weird to say, but when you start understanding the pain, the real pain you got in your life, that stuff becomes fun. Someone right. leaves you, you're like, oh man, they broke up with me, man. I'm gonna go get another girlfriend or somewhere, another boyfriend. You're like, what? How did you do that? I'm like, oh, I'm not saying I have that, but I can easily see what I suffer from is did I do the right thing? Man, I shouldn't have yelled at her, or I shouldn't have did this. Man, I shouldn't have did that. Why was I drinking so much? Oh, I shouldn't have did this. Two years later, man, I should have been a better person. Man, I should have done this. I should have done three years later. I'm like, man, look at her. She got married. Oh, she did that. Oh, I stopped drinking. Right. That's you suffering. suffering. That's the, <laughs> but you, now you realize you're like, oh my God. I'm like, yes, that when you, when you realize you're like, when you break up and you're like, man, I did all those things, but whatever. All right. And like, time to do, what did time I learn? Yeah. Right. Yes, what did I learn? Yes. What, what do I want to do differently next time? Like, okay. Yep. I heard somebody say this, that human beings are the only species 
that repeatedly punish themselves for past events. Yeah. Everybody else lets it go. And that's trauma, right? That's trauma is I am going, I've been through these past painful experiences and I'm just going to keep dragging them with me instead of sitting down and looking at them and processing through them. And, and honestly, this is part of my purpose is what burns my toast more than anything in the world is that some people have access to understanding what trauma is and some people don't. And so like my purpose is I want to help people understand what trauma is so that they can be like, oh, I'm dragging past stuff into the present and it's Mm. affecting my future. And like, oh, I can stop that. Cool. Mm. I could tell you one tragic, traumatic event that's happened to me that maybe people can relate to that they don't know they put on their kids. When I was a child, my mom used to come to my room late at night and she would say things like, who's touching you? She would wake me up in the middle of the night and be like, did somebody ever touch you? And I'd be like, no. But I remember she would just sit on my bed and ask me that. And my sister would say the same thing. My sister was like, man, mom always be, when we were growing up, she'd be like coming in the middle of the night. And most of the time, if she was like drinking or something, mm-hmm. but she would come in, I don't know her world. Now, what I'm trying yeah. to explain to people out there, when you know what trauma looks like, I'm just in bed as a child thinking about whatever cartoons and in, in, in school and fun stuff I probably was thinking about. I don't know. And my mom would do these things. Now, I, the reason why I'm able to express it to you is because all those things that I did as a child, I don't remember any of them. But I remember my mom waking me up every dang day or every other day saying this to me, right? So when I have this in my mind, I have images, time zones. It was part of my upbringing. My mom imprinted that image into my mind. What is this? My sister has it. Like, who's touching you? Wake up in the middle of the night. Who's touching you? Just what? Now in my mind, I'm like, I wake up in the middle of the night. I'm like, what? Waiting for it. Like, somebody Mm. somebody touching me. Like, what the fuck? Like, you know what I mean? Like, no, excuse my language, but that. Now you're seeing something. Something that was innocent from my mother, from whatever she was going through. And now as an adult, if I was to do that to my kid, I would just feel like it was just me just going up to my kid's room and waking them up and saying, hey, man, every day. But that's what I would feel as an adult. But what was happening to me as the kid was I was becoming my mom. Yeah. Now I wake up in the middle of the night trying to wonder who's touching me. So my mom may have never been touched or or what, but it just might be a repetitive thing that we've been passing on. So yeah. she's probably been touched by somebody or maybe her mom's been touched or someone yeah. in her life. So they just been repeating this, who's touching you thing in the middle of the night. So yeah. now I'm like, oh my gosh, I have that. I have that in me. Imprint. Like I know yeah. I could be waking, I'm scared. Like I want to wake my kid up sometimes and be like, you know, now you as good? they start to get older, I'm going to start to do what? Who's touching you? Cause they're going to yeah. be in the world. They're going to be, yeah. you know, running around people. And I'm going to start being like, this is what my mom was fearing. The fear that they, I didn't know the fear as the kid. When I became an adult, I'm like, oh, you could be touched, raped. Duh, duh. I'm like, yeah. oh, 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 trauma, trauma. You trauma, understand trauma. it. You can, oh, yeah. You trauma, know, when trauma, right. trauma everywhere. It's yeah. coming in. Trauma, trauma. Now I'm 35. Trauma, trauma. You could be touched. You could be raped. You could be raped. You could be touched. What dad was, my mom raped. Was she raped? Who was raped? What was what? like? Now yeah. you see trauma, trauma. Now that can't go away. That's a part of my image forever. Like, and that never will go away. That's a part of me. Like, memory if someone be like hey i'm like yeah my mom 70 years old i'm like yeah my mom used to wake me up but i can now see it and address it and change that algorithm now my 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 son won't get it yeah my, my male, breaking, they won't get it you're breaking the cycle and Break it. I'm breaking a, it now i'm gonna blow your mind and then i feel like i could talk to you for like six hours so i was like <laughs> I, I'm, but i'm gonna blow your mind you know you can change that Oh, you can. So now, yes, you are going to see. I'm so glad that we're talking about this and, you know, we can talk more about it off. And this was something that I learned is like, I had somatic imprints of abuse and of molestation and, you know, some really assault and, and some really just awful things that happened to me. And when I learned like, oh, I can actually, that's stuck in my body and there are ways to release it. There are ways uh-huh. that because it's unprocessed. So there's ways to actually process it and release it from your body. So not only am I not mentally dragging it forward anymore, I'm not physically dragging it forward anymore. Like, so I'm so glad that you brought this up because this is something that very, this is why I do what I do. Cause very few people know this, you know, I'm somebody who had anxiety and panic attacks from the age of nine, probably earlier, but, you know, medicated by the age of 12, off and on various medications for 30 <laughs> or almost 30 years. Wow. And I would say my anxiety levels at baseline were around a seven or eight out of 10. 
all the time. And yeah, I know that feeling. I right. Know it. I and know now, it. now I would say I'm probably a, a two. A th- yeah. um, and, and that is, if you had ever told me you're going to go from an eight to a two by just doing some of this work, I would have been like, you are lying. And also <laughs> how here's all my money. Here's a, like, here, like, just what, yeah. what do you need from me? Yeah. So I'm grateful that you were vulnerable around this because we actually can shift these things. And also just to like bring this back full circle, what you are doing with reading is you are shifting a lot of these things because you're changing the neurological connections. You're changing the way that your brain talks to your body by Mm. reading. Mm. And Mm -hmm. that is so powerful. It's so powerful. Yeah. Oliver, I'm going to, you're, you're going to have to come back for a part two if you're down for it, because I <laughs> yeah, think yeah, our sure audience enough. would love that. And we already talked about the fact that you're on TikTok. Like that, is that the main place where people can find you if they yeah, want to follow most you? Time, TikTok is usually the place because where I do most of my work stuff. I have a, a Instagram and, and YouTube and, and Twitter, yeah. but they're all Oliver Speaks and with the number one. So they're all the same. Handling. Awesome. Okay, cool. Well, we'll make sure that all of your contact info is in the show notes and Thank you so much for like respond. I was so surprised when you responded to my email. I remember sending that email and going like, well, he probably gets emails all the time. I'm sure he's not gonna. And actually I do want to end on that because I'm, there are probably people listening to this that have heard us talk about purpose and talk about all these things. Y'all send the email, like yeah. make the connection, reach out. Like, yeah. the, like, again, if they don't, uh, if they say no, is. guess what? You can handle it. <laughs> You'll Ooh. figure it out. You know, you're making me feel so good right now because This is a very important top moment in my life, however I want to view it. Mm -hmm. And this is a very important time in your life. You know, I don't know who you're trying to become. I don't know who I'm trying to become. But we're touching on topics that are very, 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 very touchy. They're very grabbing. People want to hear it. Maybe not this moment. Yeah. But I understand how the world works. And they do want to hear it at this moment. But we have to fully understand what we're operating with. And I want you to understand, I'm operating with something powerful inside of me. I can tell. Yeah. One of these things are going to happen. I'm talking about go on some show that somebody was like, I can't believe that made it to, you know, 40, first 48 or so. I don't know. You know what? I was just thinking 60 minutes. Was it 60 minutes? Not first 48. So 60 minutes. You can see I was in prison, by the way. I mean, that's for another story. But this is powerful for me to be have been sitting in a jail cell saying, I ain't going to die up in here. One day I'm going to be mm-hmm. watch. The world's going to know. They're going to know I wasn't this. And I didn't know what the route I was going to take, you know, but I can see now it was the opposite of what the world wanted to give me is who I actually am. An educated yeah. being, you know, smart, amazing, yeah. beautiful. You know, you're, you're intelligent. You're, you know, all these things that you felt you had to be the opposite of is who you need to actually be the most of. And with me embracing this, it's powerful to know that I can actually go online and read like the most terrible adult in the world and probably get a million views. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's powerful. I'm scared to do it. And I'm like, but this, it's not about the views. It's the fact that there's an energy following behind me with this because it's a, it's it's an uncharted area. We're like, Whoa, like, what is this? Like, what does this do for us? You're like, this changes the ball game for people who lived one way. Yeah. You know, this literally yeah. changes it now. You change that. Like, that's what you're doing. You're going from like, hold up. You're going from this to, you're not going. There's no way he can do that. I'm like, but how many times have people in this world done that he can't do that? And right. I'm doing it. So you're a part of this journey. I'm a part of this journey. The world's a part of this journey. But I truly believe this is not me, but something about this journey is going to be huge with this p- purpose of talking about how people can develop and change and, 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 and reading and all these things are going to make a big, a big change. I just have this huge feeling because there's no reason why I should be who I am. I, I didn't ask for this. Right. I didn't wake up and say, I want to be it. No, right. No, you don't get asked. I was chosen for something like this. It's not, it's not me being cocky or anything like that. I was laying in my bed, just trying to figure out the next club I need to go to and the next thing up and next drink I need to turn up on. That's all I was thinking about. And something came to my head and said, it's time. Mm. I'm like, time for what? It was like, you know what time it is. Like, you know I, exactly what it's going to happen. And I didn't know what the hell time I, it is. And I'm telling you right now, I'm on an interview with you. Yeah. Still like with that voice in my head, like, keep going. 
And I'm like, right. where the hell are you taking me? I drove a yeah. van from Pennsylvania to California and, and literally lived on the beach. And I'm like, what is going on with my life? But I'm here to tell you, this is powerful because yeah. there should be no reason why at one moment I'm literally screaming with a sign of a, a sign on the side of the road saying like, you know, I literally did this. Yeah. And then the next day, LA Times is coming saying, we want to interview you. Then the next day, Jennifer Hudson is saying, come on. That doesn't happen. There's a reason why this is happening is because something came to me and said, you're, you're, the, you're it. It's yeah. your time. You, you went through abuse. You went through abuse. You went through all that. You went through that. It's your time now to get up and go to work. And yeah. I was like, bro, what? It's your time now. All that you just dealt with. Now go turn it into something. And mm -hmm. look at it. It's like all the pain I was dealing with. The teacher who hurt me, there's only a matter of time till he gets contact or something. I'm like, I thought I was going to hurt him with myself. You're like, no, you're going to hurt him in a way that's beyond his intelligence. To make him see like what you were doing to little boys and little girls at, at that time. <laughs> you yeah. were a monster. Yeah. Now I'm showing you something. I've waited 30 some years to show you you're a monster. You don't want to beat that person. You don't want to hit him. You want to bring them out. Let them see like, right. that's a monster. Like, yeah. That's that's the universe doing this. I'm not doing this. That's what I'm starting to realize. I'm like, this is powerful. People want to talk and hear about this. I'm like, I thought I was going to have to beat this guy up. I'm like, no, you just no. You beat this guy up by learning how to read. Oh. Becoming educated. That's how oh, you beat him up. Right. That's oh. it. Literally, I'm like, oh my gosh. Every day I get up, I'm like, I'm beating the hell out of this dude every day I read. And it hurts me doing it because I know it's hard. So that's how I know. I'm like, well, people be like, what are you fighting? I'm like, him him I'm beating it. I'm like every day I just uppercutted him every time I read a chapter I just knocked his ass out I'm like yep and I'm, I'm gonna read another one too that's it because I realized I'm like the only way he beat me is if I stop that's the only way he was ever beating me is when I wasn't doing it once I picked up the book it was like that's it the universe say he's up right time to go he's about to win if I did this as a kid I would have won oh you know how intelligent I would have been if I would have been reading as a kid till now y'all would have heard this story at 12 <laughs> you know like but I didn't have it. So now I'm 35 and I'm like, dang, there, it's like you couldn't do it at 12. You didn't have it. Now at 35, you're right. taking your power back. It's only right. a matter of time to one of these shows come up and be like, and that dude's picture on something. And I'm like, you didn't do that. The universe brought it to him. He shouldn't have yes. beat them little kids when he was a kid. All yeah. of us hurt us. Some of us are died. Some of us are in jail. I lost some of my friends. Like they, they was all messed up from this stuff. And now I'm sitting here now looking at him like, so this is how it works. I'm like, yes, right. this is how powerful things can be when you follow your purpose. One day you're sleeping in the gutter. Next day, you might be on some news channel and people sending you millions of dollars. Like, you're yeah. like, what the? F you're like, yes, because you're following your purpose, your chosen purpose. And that's what I've been on. And that's why what you're saying right now, when you sent this email, this might be the interview. I'm not saying, you know what? You got to put it in there, but this could be the interview to change your life yeah. on both of ours. Yeah. And you're, doing, you're like, I sent an email to this dude in 2023, July. And my life, literally, that's it. It went to a whole nother world. Now, my that that's what people are missing. Those. I, when I heard that message was like, get up. I was like, huh? I, Who the hell are you? Like, go go to California. I'm like, why? They're like, <laughs> when you were like, hey, email him. You're like, why am I going to email I know. this? That, like, it was that. It was, on. you need to email him. And I've had those. that I, I've talked a little bit about this Every on the podcast. Every one of them. Every, Don't let them slip. Right. Every one of them. Even the most embarrassed ones. So when people were like, how did you go viral on TikTok? How did you? I'm like, because I didn't let the, the one slip. I seen it. Like you seen it. I was like, oh, I'm not posting this. This is. Yeah. But I was like, no, 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 no. This one never gets post. This is it. This I heard it. And I was like, this is it. Listen to it. When someone says, send this podcast to Oprah. If your mind said that, you drive your ass to motherfucking Oprah's building. You bang on the door every day. Yeah. What, what's going to happen is she'll kick you out. Some news channel comes and says, well, why they kick you out? Then you hand the news channel. I wanted to hand this to Oprah. Oprah comes and says, well, why is the news over here? And then you're like, what the Oprah kicked me out. Right. Now they're saying, oh, that, this is what happens. And you're like, I thought Oprah was going to come take my tape. We were going to become best friends. We were going to be on the show together. I'm like, no, no, no. You might go to Oprah and expose Oprah right. by accident. You, now everybody's like, oh, Oprah does this to people. And I'm like, and you're like, not saying that's what could happen. What I'm yeah. saying is that might have been your journey from what you don't know what's going on. But since you scared to make that, that like, I wasn't scared. I was standing on the side of the road with a sign looking crazy. And then LA Times finds me. It's like, I didn't think that was going to be the case. I'm like, yeah. what the? 
So when I realized that, I'm like, oh, this is only a matter of time. Like, you got to stay in this. Every chaotic situation, it don't matter. If it looks crazy to other people, I go in the rain. If I, I'm, I literally be in the side of the road when I wanted to become a motivational speaker, I motivational spoke to the road because in my head, I said, these are people just like the people in the stadium. And I'm scared to come on the side of the road and just yell at them. But I want to yell at them in a stadium. And I'm like, and my mind was saying that. I'm like, oh my God, yes. like, this is it. So I yes. stood on the side of the road. I'm the motivational, da, da, da. And I started to feel it. And I'm like, oh, I was just scared. I'm no different than nobody. I could do, and I'm like, you could, that. Like, it doesn't make sense, but you do it. You're like, I'm literally about to go sing in the shower the best I've ever sang in my life and recorded and posted on, like, yep, you next, that's it. Like, yeah. you don't get it. You're like, I'm gonna be an actor at 100 years old. I'm like, yeah, go ahead, put up your acting TikTok. Somebody gonna hire you tomorrow to be some, uh, playing an old character in some movie. Like, you'd be like, that. You, cause you're like, I'll never do that. I'm like, I thought that too. I would never do right. anything because I couldn't read. And now look at me. I'm doing all the things I couldn't do and I'm doing it in the thing that I don't know how to do. I'm yeah. literally going up saying, hey, I can't read and I'm not good at this. And they're like, wow, that's such a great speech. <laughs> right, like, like, thank you oh. for time. Right, it's that vulnerability. <laughs> it's that, that, oh, yes, it, it, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's I the mean, word. People don't yes. get it, that's it, that's it. it. All right, y'all, go send your emails, go listen to the voice, <laughs> go talk on the side of the road go join tiktok and start showing us your things because i promise you yes it's hard and yes it's scary and also it's worth it and mm -hmm. oliver thank you so much thank you all right y'all we'll see you next week thank you so much for listening to today's episode invitation to head to our show notes to check out the offers and connections we mentioned or you can just head straight over to instituteforTrauma.com and hop in our email list so that you never miss any of the cool things that we're doing over at the Institute. Invitation to be well and to take care of yourself this week, and we'll see you next time.